Hi guys, it's Nick, and if you didn't know, I only have three brain cells, so please be patient with me. Okay, two now. So today we are going to be discussing rare plants that I own personally that I'm going to show you that I don't believe are worth the hype. And what I mean by that is they don't grow very well or very fast or there are other plants that are comparable. I'd like to say that this is purely my judgment. I mainly decided what went on this list based on if there are plants that already looked similar to the plants I'm mentioning, or if I feel they don't have any unique features that justify the price people are paying for the plant. I'm also going to tell you what the prices are for these plants or tell you what they've been sold for recently. So you have an idea on just how ridiculous <laughs> these plants are priced for what they are. I was thinking about doing a dupes video However, I'm not gonna kid myself, I don't think people really want dupes for rare plants. I think the draw to them is kind of like the chase, and then owning a plant that's really expensive that people want and desire, and that makes people feel like they're important or whatever, I don't know. It's like keeping up with the Joneses. So without further ado, let's start with plant number one, or should I say, mistake number one. Okay guys, so I don't wanna overwhelm you with how like amazing and spectacular this plant is but um just giving you a fair warning click off if you can't handle it here is the most expensive pothos global green pothos why did i have to have it well because it was expensive so this is pretty basic the only standout feature is kind of this region of lighter green variegation on the inside of the leaf it's not very striking uh you kind of have to like come up close to the plant and kind of like hold it up to the light and squint your eyes and be like oh okay okay that's like that's that's like a light green and the rest of the leaf is like a medium light green so how much money did i throw into an incinerator for this on my etsy receipt it tells me that i spent 27.53 and that was on July 31st, 2020. What a way to ring in August. But I also bought cucumelon seeds on March 23rd, 2017. If you've seen them, they're so adorable. This is also an overrated plant, although it's not expensive. It was only 250 and I think it was free shipping. Now these are adorable. They look like little mini watermelons. I'll insert a picture like up here or something. They don't taste good though. They're like, they're tiny and they're not crunchy. They've got like a hard kind of like shell around them. It's not like a shell, but it's just, it's not pleasant. And then the inside is just like seedy and sour. It's not good. So we are back, it's a different day. So I realized that I filmed the rest of the video and uh, the audio was messed up because the mic was not correctly plugged into my phone. So there was a really annoying buzzing sound that absolutely no one would sit through. Okay, moving on. So, you may ask, how much does this go for in today's current market? Well, the answer is $15 a node, or at least that's what I found out on Etsy. Of course, I bought this and it had three leaves, uh, two of which have fallen off at this point, but it was 27 something something. So I guess I got a deal because it was less than $45 and that included shipping, so steal in my book. It was really like the deal of the century. I promise. So I lurk on Reddit a little bit and I found a few posts showing that these have been sold at Walmart recently for like $15 a basket. So if you're looking for one of these or you're looking to buy it and then chop it up and sell it for $15 a note, they might be at your local Walmart. Unfortunately, you cannot call and ask if they have it in stock just because it's listed under beautiful home decor. My friends call me Beautiful Home Decor. And my full name is Houseplant. So, thank you, Costa Farms. That's really helpful. That's kind of like saying my friends call me Animal and my full name is Homo Sapien. Really great at being descriptive. I just hope none of their employees go into criminal justice. This just in, police uh, officers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, were asking people to be on the lookout for a man who robbed a store. Let's take his description. 
So let's do a chit chat about how it's been doing for me. I'll give you a close up and just describe my experience with it so far. Here it is. I got it and it had three nodes and it had three leaves. Two of the leaves fell off. This is the only original leaf. This one is yellowing. It gave me these two kind of weird looking leaves. And now I have this healthy looking leaf and it looks like another healthy looking leaf is going to come out. I hope it's, you know, adjusted. I hope that's what's going on. I hope I can grow a pothos. Um, if not, that's it's, kind of sad, but that's my life. So uh, here that is in its full glory. Yep. Okay, so my next victim on my defamatory rant is Silver Glory String of Hearts. Now, the reason I don't particularly like these and I don't think they're worth the extra money compared to regular String of Hearts is because I think they look very similar. I really have to get quite close to discern the difference between this and this which is kind of not worth it to me. Like if I have an expensive plant, I want it to kind of make a statement. I don't want to have to go up and be like, okay, like the, do the leaves look kind of like rounder? Like how, how much, how many flecks of like silvery color is on it? Like I want it to be like, boom. Also the silver on the leaves in my experience does not persist. The leaves start fully as silver, but then they kind of fade to green with silver venation, which is basically what the regular version of String of Hearts is. And with this version being so cheap, I don't see the point in it. I would rather go for variegated String of Hearts, which are very discernibly different and kind of striking. You've got that nice pink you know, wrapped around the leaf and the leaves are very thick and it's a lot different than the regular version of String of Hearts. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So here are the newest leaves. They're silver, they're cute, they're everything that you want in a Silver Glory String of Hearts. But as you can see right here, they've kind of reverted to almost fully green. So I don't know, I really don't wanna pay a premium for a plant that's going to be like half of what its namesake is. These leaves just don't look very striking to me. Here's the regular version and some of the leaves are pretty silvery. Obviously by your discretion, it's your choice, but I don't know. I just think the differences are so minute. It's not really worth paying the huge price difference. I'd also like to say that it grows about the same rate as the regular version of String of Hearts. It's still got uh, chlorophyll underneath the silveriness, so it's still photosynthesizing about the same amount. So I would say that's the only thing that's going for it. How much does Silver Glory String of Hearts cost? I went on to Mercari and I found one that was seven nodes and it went for $55. Just FYI, this is about seven nodes as well. Fortunately <laughs> for me, for my bank account, I got this in a trade because I would not pay $55 for it. I actually traded it for a small plantlet of Peperomia Pink Lady that I got at a local nursery for $4. And it was probably about like a fifth of the Peperomia. So this was like 80 cents or something like that. And uh, that's, that's about what it's worth to me. It's cute, but not $55 cute. So I think this next plant is actually the worst one and it kind of makes my brain hurt. So the incomparable Philodendron Rio. Actually, it's very comparable, which I will explain later in this segment. So I did not know what this plant was worth. I had gotten it in a trade. I actually used it in an experiment video and um, I kind of let one of the stems get moldy and I, you know, for the experiment, but I saved it, fortunately. And yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I was like, you know, this looks like Philodendron Brazil. So I, it must be, you know, kind of similar in price. I was very wrong. Again, I traded it for like a few leaves of this Peperomia Pink Lady. People were insane over this Peperomia Pink Lady. I, I don't get it. People were just throwing all sorts of stuff at me. So before I go into the rest, I'd just like to tell you what this plant costs just to kind of help you understand how ridiculous it is once I go into further explanation. This is an exclusive cultivar of Philodendron heteraceum, Hartley Philodendron, that was discovered by Gabriella Plants. So only one greenhouse produces this. I don't know if it's patented or licensed or whatever, but if it is, other greenhouses can't grow it. Of course, nobody's going to come after Etsy, eBay, Mercari sellers, so they're safe. The price that Gabriella Plants sells this for, and of course it's out of stock, is $50 for a three inch pot. So like basically this. 
Of course, there are eBay, Etsy, and Mercari sellers that are selling this for an extreme markup. Beyond the markup of this, it's a Hartley philodendron. You can find a four inch pot of philodendron in Brazil for like $5. So how much was this sold for? I looked up philodendron Rio and hit the sold button on Mercari. That way I could see what the price the plant sold for is and not what people are listing it for and then marking down. So 17 days ago at this point, a single node, one node of this with a leaf costs $60. No free shipping. I, this makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't know this. I was like, it's just like, oh, it's just like, you know, it's just like philodendron Brazil's like less lime greeny sister. Beyond this, Gabriella Plants actually had to make a chart because people were confusing this with some other cultivars. So I guess this stripe down the center, there can be a variation in the order of creams and silvers and whites, I guess. Apparently, a lot of people confuse this with silver stripe philodendron, um, which has the variegation pattern cream, light green, sometimes white, then silver, and then dark green. As opposed to Rio, which is silver, cream, silver, dark green, as opposed to cream splash, which is light green, cream, dark green. It also says the line between silver stripe and cream splash can be challenging. I also see a bunch of sellers using the cultivars interchangeably. So they'll put like philodendron Rio slash silver stripe for sale, which makes me wonder why are people, you know, paying $60 per node of this? when they're paying for the silver stripe i think like i don't know i saw three nodes for twenty dollars that's still ridiculous but not as ridiculous i feel like people just want to find the most expensive plant or expensive version of a plant and then buy that i don't really think they care what it looks like or else i don't think that what's going on on mercari would be happening i'm sure if this was at walmart they would just walk right by it so there are seven mature leaves I could cut from this. The rest of them are kind of like old or tiny or intermediates between leaves and sheaths. That means this could be $420. Smoke weed every day. This is not $420. Smoke weed every day. Okay, I'll stop. It's just not it. It's not it. I'm sorry. You're cute, but you're not it. I don't know. Is this worth $420 to you? It's cute. It's nice. I appreciate it. Um, I'm still gonna love it when, you know, it gets propagated to the nth degree and it's worth no more than what the cost is to propagate it. At the end of the day, it's a leaf. Imagine you went to a restaurant and they put four pieces of romaine on your plate and they said, that'll be $240. Hi, um, manager, whatever she's on, I'll have some. Yep, I'm just petting a $60 leaf, apparently. Is this what people do? Are they just like, yeah, $60. As far as growing this, it's the same care as like any other regular Hartley philodendron. It grows the same rate. It requires no extra care, but well, yeah, it requires you to care enough to spend $60 on a note. But other than that, no extra care required. Our next plant is Hoya Serpens. Now I get it. It's really cute. It's tiny. It's charming. You just want to like pinch its leaves. But for all the alternatives that are out there, why do you want to spend like, I don't know, $90 on this? There are lots of tiny cute things that trail. There are lots of peperomias and other such plants. I don't know, I didn't research it that deeply, but I know there are, and uh, they're a lot cheaper. I have this lovely string of turtles right here, probably like $2 a string of turtles, and uh, I think it's just as interesting, if not more than this. I mean, the leaves on this don't even have any pattern. They're just kind of like meh green. At least these kind of look like little turtles, and. 
they're adorable. I don't know, it's just not worth it. I guess like people that collect Hoyas, they want to collect it because it's a Hoya and there are no alternatives to Hoyas because they love Hoyas. So I guess if that's you, so be it go do it. If you are still itching to have a Hoya with cute leaves, I guess I would go for Hoya Matilda. This is the Hoya Matilda? 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 Mathide? Matilda, I think. This is still really expensive, but at least it's a lot more vigorous and it grows much faster than Hoya Serpens. This started as two leaves in June and it is now October and it's a pretty large sized plant. And it even has a penduncle on it, which is kind of odd for the size of the plant, but I don't know, it sent me that. I just can't see anyone getting a full pot of this anytime soon. If they start out with a tiny plant, it's just futile. As with this, I feel like you could give it a year and it would probably produce a pretty nice little trellis or a hoop or something like that that you could enjoy. Otherwise, you're probably not gonna get much from this. So how much has Hoya Serpens recently sold for on the online market? It looks like about three nodes for $64. Again, I did not purchase this. I got it in a trade with a larger Hoya that I had that I bought for $15 from Logies. This was worth it because it only really cost me the price of shipping and the other Hoya had to be cut back anyways because I'd like to not live in a cave of Hoya Skinneriana. So this is Hoya Chelsea and I think it's just about as dumb as the Philodendron Rio saga. I really don't get it. It's almost exactly the same as Hoya Crinkle 8. It just has, according to the internet, two less crinkles in each leaf. Get this, more money for less crinkles. So I figured out that Hoya Chelsea may have originated from Hoya Crinkle 8. I went on a sort of deep dive in a garden form. On the form, there was a big picture of a Hoya Crinkle 8 and there was kind of a branch coming out that looked more like a Hoya Chelsea and someone was posting it to get an identification and that tidbit came up. So uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty much the same thing almost. It's kind of up to your discretion, which you want to believe. I just don't see anything particularly striking that is different between the two that makes one or the other very unique besides like the two crinkles, which doesn't really mean anything to me, but people have their idiosyncrasies. I also got this in a trade or I probably would have not purchased it otherwise. I traded it for some lemon lime heart leaf philodendron that I got at Walmart for like $14, except, you know, it wasn't the whole basket. It was just like a chunk. So uh, whatever, I guess. As far as this growing for me, um, it's grown very, very slowly. I got it in July as three cuttings. And so far I have two of the cuttings. Um, one of them has sent out three leaves. The other has sent out two leaves and one is in the process of sending out, I think two leaves. So this is going to take a while before I see a nice, large, attractive pot of this. However, I'm enjoying watching it grow so far. But again, if I really wanted something like this, I would have just gotten crinkle eight. As far as the price, I see a large plant I'm going to insert for $165. And for a smaller plant, a one node cutting with two leaves, um, it sold for $20. So I guess if I wanted to divide this up and sell it, it'd be worth 20, 40, 60, eight, like $100, I don't know, something like that, which to me, is absolutely not worth it. So just for fun, no one is selling individual nodes of Hoya Crinkle 8 because it's not worth shipping it to people for something so inexpensive. However, a plant similar in size to the Hoya Chelsea I showed you that was larger goes for about $20. That is a very large disparity for uh, just two crinkles. Our next is Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight. So I got this in a trade and it was this size when I got it in July. It's now October. It is literally the slowest growing plant that I have ever owned besides Lithops. I do not imagine I'm going to see a full-size pot of this anytime soon. Even this pot. I don't know, maybe it'll be like three years. I've also seen other people say that it's really, really slow growing. Maybe if you're in Florida and it's like 90 degrees during the day and 80 at night, um, but here it's probably like 73 degrees during the day and 65 at night. Of course, I still have this under grow lights, so it's getting, you know, a really good amount of light, but it's just, it's not doing much. It's got like a little tiny shoe. I'll show you close up. Here is the little tiny shoe. It's been growing probably like a millimeter 
a week. So um, by the time I die, so going into comparable plants, funny enough, I uh, last night I was making a tomato salad and I wanted to have Italian bread with it. So I ran to the store. I just wanted to go in quick, get the bread, leave. But I looked in the floral section because I had to walk by it and I found a Syndapsis Exotica and it took my breath away. I really do think that this is much more attractive than Syndapsis Trubii and I'm really happy I found this and for $4. Look how massive these leaves are. It's got this lovely silveriness on here. Syndapsis Trubii cannot compare. Like really, really. Look how basic this looks. I guess this isn't the best example, but whatever. This also got knocked around a little bit and wasn't in the best of care, so I think it's somewhat equal. I forgot to mention this part because of course I did, but one leaf of Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight goes for $23 on Mercari. And in three mass extinction events, you might, you just may, get another leaf. Maybe. Now, I was debating on whether or not to put this plant on this list, but I had an experience with it that made me want to. This is Hoya Lisa and uh, it's very tall. I didn't buy it like this. I bought it as two very small plants in a pot and it was like $70. However, these have grown a lot. If you give them lots of light and heat, they will just take off for you. So that's a very positive aspect of this plant. These have come down in price. I feel like earlier in the year I saw one on eBay and it was like two leaves and maybe some like small leaves and it went for like $78 for that teeny tiny plant. Whoever bought that must feel really stupid now. Regardless, a small plant with a few nodes still goes for $20, $30, $40. I would say it's not really worth it because there are other variegated Hoyas out there that have like inner leaf variegation, the same pattern basically, with growth tips that are like pigmented, like a reddish color. Namely this Hoya Crimson Princess. Of course they don't look very comparable right now because this is in a basket and these are staked up and this one looks a lot bushier, but if you did train them in the same way, they would probably look pretty similar. These leaves are more elongated, but I don't think it really negates its beauty. I got this at Walmart for $14, so this was absolutely worth it. Looking back on it, if I was going to find that, I probably wouldn't have bought these, but I don't know, I just bought into the hype. Hoya Lisa, it's a rare plant, it's desirable, so I bought it, but you know, they're doing really good for me. So I think, you know, this is worth $70. What I bought it at was not. I also forgot to tell you why I'm kind of wary about this plant. So when I got both of the plants, they're pretty small and one of them started to revert. So if you have a small plant and it reverts, there's not really much that you can do to like stop it because if you cut it off, you're cutting a lot off of it and you might just be left with a nonetheless beautiful but a lot less valuable Hoya Australis. So if you're looking to buy one of these, just be wary. And I think at some point, due to how fast these grow, they're going to be propagated in mass and probably be just as cheap as Hoya Crimson Princess. So just be aware of that if you think your Hoya Australis Lisa is always gonna be super valuable. It probably won't. The next plant is Hoya Polyneira. And this is a large plant. I'm not selling cuttings right now or ever on this platform, so please refrain from asking. I apologize. Anyways, I decided to take a risk and I purchased this overseas for a more reasonable price. It was $86 for like this whole thing. Of course, it's grown a little bit since I've had it, but I also cut a little bit off. So I kind of got it at this size pretty much. I would say, I don't know if it's worth that, but um, I got it, you know, it's cute. I know what it's worth, but I mean, what it's worth to me apart from all of the craziness that goes on in the plant community and on eBay and on Mercari and wherever the heck else. So I guess the allure of this plant is because it's called a mermaid tail or fishtail Hoya. I would say you can see this while it's a single node and you stick it in the soil. It does kind of resemble that, but once it grows and you know puts out more leaves, it just kind of looks like, I don't know, just like a regular green plant. The only thing about it, I would say, is like the venation is kind of striking, but that's only when you hold it up to light. Otherwise, you can't really see it too well. There are other Hoyas out there, like Hoya Callistophylla, 
that have venation you can see all the time. I'm not going to like hold up my Hoya all the time and be like, oh my God, look, it's the mermaid. Ooh, cute. One thing I would say that's going for it is that it's a pretty quickly growing Hoya. So if you get a note or two, you'll probably have like, you know, a reasonable size plant within a year or so. It is fall right now, which is when most Hoyas stop growing and there's a little bit of new growth on it right there. There's also a very small growth right here. So all in all, this is pretty vigorous. I guess go ahead and try it out when it's not $50 a node. I would say that an alternative to this would be the regular version of Hoya Carnosa because it's also like plain green. If you just like mixed it in, you wouldn't really notice if you're standing more than five feet away. I don't see the appeal, just find any other Hoya. I guess. Hoya pubicalyx also has like pointy leaves. So if you want pointy leaves, Hoya pubicalyx has it. Our next is Hoya croniana. Now the pots in front of me are not both Hoya croniana, but they almost look the same. Both of these plants have been very slow growing and resistant to rooting and establishing for me. So I'm already not very pleased. This is Hoya lacunosa. Someone sent me this as an extra in a trade and I potted it up. It hasn't done anything for me since. I then ordered Hoya croniana, and I guess this is Eskimo. It's got some flex on it. But I compared them to each other, and I was like, wait, which which one is which? Like, did someone send me Hoya lacunosa? Or is this Hoya croniana? So I did a bit of research, and I went on vermonthoyas.com. It's a website by Doug Chamberlain. He is the father of Emma Chamberlain, and I'm also a compulsive liar. So he is not the father of Emma Chamberlain, but... He has grown Hoyas for a long time and he's been in, you know, the Hoya trade for years and years and years. And what I discovered is that Hoya lacunosa and Hoya croniana both used to be considered Hoya lacunosa. Hoya croniana didn't exist, but it was called the heartleaf Hoya lacunosa. The two species are very similar, so for me, it's not really worth it to spend a lot of money on, you know, Hoya croniana when I could just get Hoya lacunosa basically for nothing. The Hoya croniana leaves are a bit more wide and larger than the Hoya lacunosa, but otherwise, I don't know. It looks pretty much the same. At least I didn't pay for the lacunosa. So I found this for a good deal. Uh, this was $35 for all of this. I don't see it as a good deal personally for me. So I'm not going to judge my purchases based on what they regularly go for. I'm going to base it on do I actually want to spend this amount of money? So on Mercari, seven nodes recently sold for $45. I will let you decide. So last, but most certainly least, is Philodendron Pink Princess. The main reason being is that the variegation is extremely unstable. I see posts all over the place saying, oh my God, my Pink Princess is reverting. I paid like $800 for it. Where's the variegation going? How do I get it back? And it's like, you're not getting it back. It's just a natural tendency because the less you can photosynthesize, the less you can compete with other plants. So these things kind of do it out of necessity. I have a whole video about variegation, which is very informational and a good idea to watch maybe before you buy certain variegated plants. Also, if you're looking for a plant to make you stand out as an individual, it's not like, unique or groundbreaking whatsoever. I mean, pretty much every rare plant collector has one or they're looking for one and will get one in the near future. There's like videos online of Gabriella plants and there's just like thousands in a greenhouse. It's not like they're rare or anything. It's just they're high in demand. At some point, supply is going to meet demand and they'll all be worthless. So I guess um, only buy it if you want to take that risk and you really like it for what it is and not what other people think about it and yourself. So the one in front of me is in two pieces, not because I got it from Ikea. It was because it started to revert on me. In order to preserve the variegation on the original plant, I had to cut off the reverted part so that didn't continue to send this plant's energy into just burgundy leaves. I'd also like to say I take pride in that I purchased this with my own money and it was not a trade. So I wasted $130, $150 after tax and shipping on this. 
Psychology time. As you can see, I'm running my hand up and down the strings of my hoodie. This is what's called a self-soothing motion, and I'm trying to soothe the mental distress caused by me throwing, quite literally, $130 into a blender. I wasted $130, $150 after tax and shipping. I mean, maybe it would be, you know, okay if it would continue to, like, produce pink and then I could like make trades or sell a piece and get my money back but I've cut this off probably like a month ago and it doesn't look like it's sprouting anything anytime soon. It's sprouting disappointment is what it's doing and I definitely see that. My hair is pulled back so much when I try and express myself my eyebrows like won't go down and I'm like it's such a weird feeling. Regardless there are other pink variegated plants that are not philodendrons. I've listed a few right here. Pink Illusion Syngonium, Stromanthe Triostar, I think I'm, you know, pronouncing that right. Aglaonemas, lots of them that are pink. And Caladiums. I don't know, just choose something that's not ridiculously expensive and might not be pink in a few months. As far as growth, it's grown fine for me, probably because it lost its variegation and it has all of its chlorophyll in its leaves. So I can't really tell you, you know, what a proper philodendron pink princess would grow like, but this one has grown for me fine and well. Even though I can't really call it a pink princess anymore, I guess it's a burgundy princess, whatever, I don't know. I have heard that the more pink variegation you get on these, the more finicky they are and the more fragile and the more humidity that they need to survive. Also, if your plant just starts producing purely pink leaves, it will eventually kill itself because it will starve itself of energy because the pink leaves won't have any chlorophyll. So that's also like the double-edged sword with this. People like post it online and they're like, oh my God, look, fully pink leaves, amazing. And it's like, y you know, yes, but your plant's killing itself. As far as price, I don't know. I've seen anywhere from like $60 with like a node that barely has any variegation on it to like, hundreds up to like a thousand dollars for a big full pink variegated plant. It's highly variable so I'm not even going to try and like find a representation of what it should cost or what it costs currently. That is it guys. Thank you so much. I am so tired uh, <laughs> from filming this video for the second time. Um, so if you like the video Click the subscribe button and turn your notifications on if you want to see when I post future videos. I promise I will only post high quality videos, maybe like once or twice a week. I won't spam you. Also comment down below if you have any questions, recommendations, or criticism, constructive or not. I, I don't really care. I value it all. And like the video if you like the video. Okay guys, thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, whatever, your life. Um, goodbye.